Greetings and hello again. This is the C3 Podcast. I'm Minister Webb, and I am here with Dr. Earl Grant Jr., pastor of the Covenant Community Church. And pastor, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go and get right into it. Uh, you could have buried me after the last episode. Uh, we're talking about unshakable waiting, and we were talking about Abraham and Sarah, and while we were closing the last episode. You talked about essentially when we try to help God, because you said uh, when you stop trying and start trusting, that's where faith is. You said when we are trying to help God, and we insert ourselves in parts of the process that we don't need to be in. We're essentially saying, God, I don't want you to fail. So I'm going to come on in and help you. Oh, man, that I'm going to tell you right now, that hit me in the stomach real hard, Pastor. Like, because I'm thinking about all the times that I tried to help God do something and my actions are saying to him, well, God, I don't want you to fail. So I'm I'm going I'm to step into this door that says authorized personnel only and I'm going to try to get get some work done. Oh, my goodness, Pastor. That, that that's a hard pill to swallow. And, and, and I just I just had to start there because that's how most of us operate. And we can say all day long, well, that ain't what I'm saying, but you're saying that through your actions. When you are trying to help God do what he's already promised, you're saying, God, I don't want you to fail. So let me just help you because you look like you need a little help. Yeah. Because we don't have patience. Requirement of waiting is to be patient, again, with the process. Not the product, but with the process. And here we are again. We just couldn't let the waiting go. So this is <laughs> unshakable waiting two. two. <laughs> T-O-O, meaning that waiting also. So there were others who exemplified waiting as well. And we're in Hebrews chapter 11. This is verses 13 through 16. Uh, it says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had an opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Who are we talking about now in this particular section of unshakable waiting to? Well, I think in particular we're talking about the patriarchs. Uh, we're talking about how they demonstrated a waiting faith, <clears throat> a faith that did not mind waiting, even though they did not see the uh, fulfillment of all that God promised. Mm. It did not stop them from trusting God and living as though the promise would come to pass. And they passed that promise on generationally. Mm. And so they trusted God's word enough to accept that even though we have not seen the total fulfillment of the promise, mm. we are passing the promise on to the next generation that it is going to come to pass. Mm. You got me uh, thinking about our ancestors and those that came before us and all that they endured for us to be able to realize this particular part of the promise. So that lets me know that my obedience, and as you said, my obedience is a loving response to uh to God, God's saving grace. To God's saving grace. So my obedience is doesn't just directly affect me. My obedience affects generations to come after me. That's why, as we talked about in the previous episode, obedience is, is, is uh, what we say is necessary. Obedience um, is 
I can't remember worthwhile, but it's 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 necessary, right? Um, talk, Why obedience matters? Yes, that's what you said. Why obedience matters? It matters because it's it's, it's also not about you. If you want those, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, those who are going to come after you to reap the benefits and the blessing that God has promised you, you got to be obedient because it just doesn't affect you. So we're talking about the patriarchs. We're talking about unshakable waiting too. unshakable waiting. They also waited. Talk to me about what are some of the requirements of waiting? First one was patience. Patience. You gotta be. You gotta be patient, um, in your faith, um, <clears throat> and you gotta be persistent. Uh, requirement of waiting. You gotta be persistent. You gotta persist in trusting God. Um, be faithful unto death, mm. because it talks about even unto their passing. Mm -hmm. So in spite of their flaws, their faults, their failures, their ups and downs, they were faithful unto death. They were patient. They were persistent. Uh, they had a perceptive uh, faith. Um, they could see uh, the hand of God far off and yet realize the benefits of it right now. Mm. I don't have it yet. I don't have it yet. But I do have him hmm. right now. I don't have all that he promised, but I do have his presence. And as long as I have that, I know what he promised is going to eventually. It's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. But he's taking care of me day by day right now. In this process of getting. <laughs> I'm in the present process. Hmm that I will get to and see. And if I don't, my offspring will. Hmm. So what keeps us from waiting? You talked about we got to be patient. We got to be persistent. What keeps us from being those things in this process of waiting? First thing, lack of trust. As we talked about that, lack of trust. You don't, you don't really trust God. We say we do, but we, we don't really... Trust him with our whole heart. We we reserve some parts. So so lack of trust is the big area. But then the, the other thing that keeps us from from waiting is we are we are grumbling and complaining. Okay, Pastor, here you go about about the process because God not doing what we want him to do when we want him to do it how we want him to do it with whom we want him to do it with, and so we complain. Because he is, God is, not that he's not concerned with the product. He's more concerned with the process that's conforming us mm. to become who he wants us to be. Because in us developing and being shaped and formed in the process, that is the test to see whether or not we can really sustain what he's going to give us. What he's going to give us here is temporary, right. preparing us for the eternal. Mm -hmm. And so this is just a rehearsal down here. He's preparing us for eternity, but so we get hung up on temporal stuff. So we complain, we have lack of trust. And then the other big area why we don't wait is because discontentment and disappointment. Mm. So... Um, we easily become disappointed. And and the thing that struck me about this whole ad thing about disappointment was um, disappointment has to do with expectation. Talk to us, Pastor. And so uh, the problem, we are disappointed when what we expect don't match the outcome because mm. we go into relationships we go into uh, any situation we have expectations going in mm -hmm. and then when those expectations are not met are not met we disappoint the result it disappoints but see 
disappointment is not bad. Because disappointment is a tool of evaluation. And so what, what, what am I evaluating? It's helping me to evaluate what God didn't promise. Stay, stay. <laughs> because disappointment, okay, disappointment, let's put it like this. Oh, my goodness. Disappoint, disappointment helps me see the things that are in my life that God didn't promise. Just because I expected it didn't no, mean it God. Was... It doesn't mean God promised that. I went, I went into this relationship expecting the other person and myself mm. to not have any issues. God didn't promise oh. that. Ooh, pastor. I went in expecting that there would be uh there would be, you know, good prosperity and not want. That was my expectation. God oh. didn't promise that. God didn't promise that. I expected when I went in that we'd be healthy, we'd be fine. I didn't expect sickness, not to this level. But God didn't promise that. But what God promised was, I'll never leave you. Oh, pastor, come on. Or forsake you. But see, when we, when our expectations about somebody doesn't match their character, it brings about disappointment. Oh, my goodness. Because we impose on people our expectations. Our expectations. As though that's who they are. When God is showing us, that's not what I promise you. Disappointment is a tool of evaluation for me to evaluate the things in my life that God did not promise. So, so it's a benefit to us. We, we think it's a detriment when in actuality, uh, disappointment is a tool that God uses to help <laughs> us draw closer to him and not lean to our own understanding. Are y'all listening to this? I'm, I'm just saying. He, it, he it, flipping all of this. He flipping us on top of our heads right now. And he so, said disappointment is not a detriment. It's really a benefit. Yeah. But w because we have to view it from, from the perspective God wants us to have to use, which is see what is it that God promised versus what you expected. Y'all, I, I really don't know what to even uh, say right now uh, <laughs> these, so, for these last few minutes. So I'm just saying, for me, that was that was that was like therapeutic. That oh, was my. like therapeutic and uh, totally disruptive. I know because you just disrupted me, and I'm pretty sure some people that are watching it and, and, and are listening. So you know, this disappointment is not bad. That's all we're saying. Disappointment is. Uh, a a blessed benefit to help us see My what God will have us see by faith. Because when we go into relationship situations, circumstances, and all these things, uh, we go in there with our expectation. That doesn't mean that your expectation is in line with God's promise. As the young people would say, that's a bar. <laughs> Disappointment is not a detriment. But it's a benefit. Ooh. Yeah. So use it for what it's meant to for. To evaluate. My goodness. What has God promised you in this season, in this stage, mm. in this situation? Ooh. What has God promised you that's different? Because it causes me. Oh, Pastor, this is good. It causes me to see what I've been putting my expectation and my trust in versus who it's supposed. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm done for. I, I'm, I'm done. Bury me again after this episode because I'm, I'm, I am, I am out of there. Oh, yeah. You, you, that sums it up. I'm disappointed. Why are you disappointed? Is it because you're disappointed because you put your faith, your trust, and your expectation in something that God did not promise you rather than the one who made you the promise? 
Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so, 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 when we talk about why we don't wait, why is because we don't handle uh, trust. We don't handle uh, our complaining, grumbling, and then we don't handle discontentment and disappointment properly. Oh my goodness! Because, like you said, as we talked about before earlier, you know, one of the previous episodes. Um, uh, faith, trusting in God is transferring our confidence and hope mm -hmm. from ourself or whatever, whatever we put in to him. Yeah. And so when we're, when we're disappointed, it's because we put our hope, our trust, our confidence, our reliance, our oh, dependence, our belief in that which is other than him. And as we said in the previous episode with Noah and the Ark, I'm with him. Yeah. You got to so, be with him. So if you with him, you, okay. If you with him, you are less likely to be disappointed. And we're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there. Mm -mm. <laughs> if you with him, you're less likely to be disappointed. Look, y'all. Uh, <laughs> anyway. I don't, I don't have anything left to say. I, I'm pretty sure many of you all are just like me. you my goodness disappointment is not a detriment it is a benefit but when you are with him you are less likely to be disappointed that's dr earl grant jr everybody if you if you don't know who he is that is dr earl grant jr pastor of the covenant community church and this is the c3 podcast Please share this with somebody. Um, follow us on Instagram and, and follow us on Facebook. We would love to see you all come worship with us in person at 15651 Bull Verity Road here in San Antonio, Texas. Again, thank you all for joining us for this episode of the C3 Podcast. We'll see you next time. Bless you. Well, hello and thank you for joining the C3 podcast of Covenant Community Church. Uh, we are delighted and excited that you chose to be with us today. And if you have any questions or comments that you would like to share with us, we invite you to uh, go to our website at mycovenantcc.com, fill out our virtual connection card, share your comment or your question, and I promise you we'll get back to you as soon as possible.